show. Right now, very happy to have back on the show, and it's been too long, Don Lemon, award-winning journalist. He has a very popular YouTube channel show, The Don Lemon Show, author of the number one New York Times bestseller, This is the Fire, What I Say to My Friends About Racism, and to get a brand new book out, Once I Was Lost, My Search for God in America. Don, I good to see you. Lost. I once was lost. It's from well, the I once, I, once, I once was lost. Oh, yeah, like yeah. from the, exactly, sorry about that. Amazing from Grace. The Amazing Grace type of thing. And you, by the way, my last name, Obidallah, Allah is God. I am the little servant of God. That's what my <laughs> name means in English. That's literally the translation. And my first name, Dean, in Arabic means faith. So uh -huh. religion and God are, every time I see my name, I, I think of God. So I want to talk to you about that. Let, let's talk first, though, for the first few minutes here about the state of the media today. Uh, you used to work for years at CNN in corporate media. And now we look at, you have your own show. Is it? Do you have more freedom? Was there ever limitations on, I don't mean like FCC type of things, but I mean, in terms of content and the topics you wanted to talk about that corporate media just wasn't embracing. Um, yes, yes and no. Here's the thing. No one ever told me what to say at CNN, but right. you know, you have to cover everything that's sort of happening in the news, right? So right. today we would be, you know, extremely focused on the hurricane or the weather or whatever is happening. So, and uh, there's much more freedom where you get to cover things that you think are just important that may um, not be covered on uh, on corporate media, as, as I like to call it. So yes, there is sort of the restriction in that if you work for company A, you do, the, do it the way that company A does it, right? If you work for company B, you do it the way company B does it. So no one ever told me what to say, but there was an idea editorially of where the network was going. And so we had to sort of fit it in that box. You know, we would go outside of the box usually later in the show, but you had to cover the big stories. But this is just complete freedom where I can say and do whatever is important to me. And that feels really good. I imagine. And I've watched some of the clips that you really enjoy. Not that you enjoyed your CNN show. I used to be on your show uh, at different periods often. And it was always fun and provocative. And also, I think, honestly, Don, with you, at the same time, you were informing the audience. I think if you watch your show, you were going to learn something, right? Sometimes I watch it, and it's not just CNN, some of corporate media, it's just bad political theater, when, especially when it gets to politics, just people debating and and, and arguing. You're, you're not learning, like you're not learning we'll anything. Learn you anything. Don't, when you, you turn the channel, it may have been entertaining, maybe, but if not, it just angered you. Or mm. you didn't learn anything, you're like, these people, why are they doing this? I don't get that. It seems so old, but I see that a lot, especially uh, on CNN now, which is struggling for ratings, truly, greatly struggling. And I think part of it is that neither the left nor right really trust them. Well, I don't listen again. I, I don't tune in to, um, to cable that much. And it's not about, I don't really watch CNN because right. I, um, uh, you know, every once in a while I watch MSNBC and I'll even turn it on Fox. Um, because if I'm watching cable, then I want to see people who, um, I want to see more personality. Right. And mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to see the food fights, but there's a reason I feel that people watch Rachel Maddow. She's a star, right? You and she, and not only that she's a star, but she has something to say. I want to watch people who have something to say. I don't agree with anything, just about anything that Sean Hannity said or has ever said, but he has something to say. And I, and, and a lot of people listen to him. Um, obviously he can move the right. And I just want to tune in to say, okay, let's see. Sean's a star. There's no denying that. Mm -hmm. um, even, even with Megan Kelly, who I don't agree with anything, who's become a troll and, and has proven, you know, when she said she wasn't racist, she's proving she doubles down every single day on that. Um, but people listen to her for some reason. And Megan was a star. I believe that she was, was a star. I don't believe that she's a star now. Uh, I don't mean that to denigrate her, but I think she was a star when she was uh, on uh, Fox. And that was, that was where she was supposed to be. That's where she was her best. And so, and, and you wanted to tune into her. So the same, so if, so if cable news is not giving that to me, then why am I watching? Right. right. So much people who have something to say. And, um, but are you saying like, it's in the eight, like when you say someone's a star, does it matter the platform Megan Kelly's on? Are you saying that person is a star? Like someone has a star both, quality, but there's something compelling matter. about them. Okay. Both it does. Matter. But you, you can be a star, but you also have to play in your lane. If you're out of position, then that's going to that's going to inhibit you. Right. You can be the best pitcher or whatever and a bad first baseman, but you're great at the game of baseball. Right. right. So I think that you can be a star. But if you're out of position, that, then that that hurts you. And just like, you know, I felt like I was out of position on the morning show, like I, at 10 o'clock was like, 
at, at night, that's a perfect place for me, right? Because right. I get editorial freedom and I could say whatever I wanted to say pretty much. And I sort of get, I got to decide. Um, but, uh, you know, speaking of the food fights or whatever, as I had been going around the country talking to people, <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you saw my stuff leading up to the debate, mm -hmm. uh, where I went across the country and I, I talked to people uh, and they really, you know, opened up to me. But what I realized is that the people who were the most informed were actually the people who were on digital media looking at the stories, but then after they, not the folks who were just getting the headlines from social media, not those folks, but they would see something, maybe they'd see a headline and they would dig into it and they'd go, okay, let me see what the Washington Post says. Let me see what this fact check says. Let me see what this person who I respect says. And they, so they sort of did their own homework. They were the most informed. And I don't believe like do your own research or whatever, not like, you know, during the pandemic. Sure. But people who actually <laughs> were interested in finding out what the truth was. And so they would say, you know, by the time I'm, if I'm watching like a cable news food fight, by the time the argument or the segment is over, I don't even remember what it, what was the initial intent of why was I watching it and what was I supposed to get out of that? And so uh, I found that there, there were the, the people who were the most informed. And I also think I'm chatting with Don Lemon. You know, when you mentioned the platform matters, I think an example for me, and you tell me if you disagree, is Tucker Carlson. When he was on Fox News, he was almost a leader, a, a thought leader on the right. He would say things. He could affect policy. I remember specifically him affecting Ken Paxton in Texas, the attorney general, to open a case to, to pardon somebody that he wanted who was involved in a shooting of a Black Lives Matter protester. He had a, a time where he had that power to make elected officials who do have power, real power, change and do things. And I think now that he is where he is, he might be popular in his subset. But I think without that platform of Fox News, he doesn't have the 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 strength. He doesn't have the impact. I'm going to disagree with you somewhat. Go ahead. Uh, and that Fox News is a very powerful um, institution, right? It's a very, very powerful platform. And it does make a difference. But I think that he has, I think that he is, um, um, has repositioned himself and is still very powerful. I'm not sure if you read the New York Times piece on him uh, just a week or so ago uh, that talked about, you know, how the 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 future, the now and future of the MAGA movement uh, are people like Tucker Carlson and others. It's not J.D. Vance. Hmm. And so I think he still does have a very huge power. Um, Tucker, you know, has a way to sort of ingratiate himself and to move into places where um, he is going to garner power, right? And he's going to say the outrageous things and he's going to speak for the people who um, feel like they don't have, you know, any sort of voice uh, and, and he's going to lean into that. And those folks are going to, you know, are they're, they're, they're drawn to him. He has this huge, huge influence, uh, especially on men, young and older white men. And they show up in droves to arenas to see him. So while he may not have that broadcast power or that mm -hmm. power that he had, he has certainly um, found a way to evolve and to have a, maybe a different type of power, maybe a quieter behind the scenes power. So I have to disagree with hmm. you a little bit, but I don't think anyone, well, look, Tucker Carlson had the most successful cable show in, in, in cable history, most successful show in cable history. And look, again, I don't agree with anything pretty much that Tucker Carlson says, but you have to you have to be honest about his influence and his power and his star power. I didn't happen to think that he was a great performer. Yeah, I didn't either. But but, you know, for some reason he had the experience. Like, you know, I thought Bill O'Reilly was a great performer on television. I just I used to want to watch Bill O'Reilly. There was nothing that compelled me about watching Tucker Carlson except to, for the farsity of what he was saying. Like, are you kidding me? Do people <laughs> believe this? So read the New York Times article. It'll I show will. you has a different type of influence now. Yeah. And, and doesn't that, in a way, speak to the demise of corporate media as having a stranglehold on getting the message out there? Look, I think corporate media does, but also with that, it speaks to demise for him on how you know the right, the right is kind of cult like in their following of right wing media figures. It's the, the left doesn't have that, or even the center or whatever you want. It's the people who are the far right. It's a cult like Fox has a cult like following. People turn it on, they leave it on all day, they get angry, and then they you know they wake up angry, they go to bed angry, and it's like you know yeah. Ugh. The left doesn't really have that, but sorry, uh, sorry to cut you off. No, it's fine. I'd rather have a conversation than me just simply ask you questions and uh, like that and me check the boxes. You, the, you were talking about the power of the medium, right? No, I, I think because look, cable news ratings 2020 to 2024, objectively, uh, you know, CNN's seen a big drop off in primetime and 
Uh, Fox has seen a considerable drop off in primetime with Tucker Carlin. MS seen some drop off. It depends on the network, but it really feels like, I don't know when this is going to end, but I, what I've seen the difference is on the left for the first time, they began to criticize the media in the last couple of years where they didn't, we would be defending the media. Like Trump's like, they're the enemy of the people. Like, no, they're our friend. And finally, and I tried to write articles and talk about it. Look, they are, uh, it's like saying pharmaceutical companies are your friend or insurance companies are your friend. They are vessels to make money. And we have to call them out when they're not doing the right thing. And I think some of the problem for CNN is they've lost not just people on the right, but people on the left who have seen something they don't like. And you can call it sane washing of Trump, whatever, gaslighting, uh, both sides, whatever you want. It's lost credibility. And I think that online and maybe in the long run, I'm not sure how it plays out where everyone gets their own news almost curated to you by the exact person telling you exactly what you want to hear every day. In the long run, it might be destructive to society. But I think they've hastened the demise of cable news this cycle, um, certain CNN more so than the other ones, to be blunt. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's I'm not trying to get you to slide trash. No, no, no. CNN, but I'm telling you honestly, I used to write for them for years. It's, it's honestly, I'm disappointed with them because I didn't think it was like that for a long time. That's the truth. It's a very interesting assessment and one that I hear all the time. And I hear a lot, you know, it's not the same since you're gone. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, if it's coincidental or just maybe the people are like, and I can't watch or whatever. I, I look, I would, I, I always encourage people to watch CNN and maybe it's just, you know, for me, because I work there and, and we have friends there and I want to support mm -hmm. them or what have you, but I do understand uh, what you're saying. And, but I think it's not just CNN, just beyond in all media, people are narrow casting, as you say, mm -hmm. uh, and they are, a lot of people have, they want confirmation bias. But beyond that, um, people get used to seeing certain people on television. They develop a kinship. And that's part of the, that's part of having star powers that people are, can be relatable. And um, if you don't have people who are relatable and people who, you know, that people really want to tune in for who don't have something to say, then they're going to tune out. Now, regardless if you're uh, if you're CNN, if you're Fox, if you're MSNBC, if you who whatever it is, while this, you know, the tail while we're on the tail, I believe, of uh, these all these uh, mediums, uh, cable and broadcast, they're still going to have some. Right. You're still going to need them. Sure. Um, they're going to need a strong linear product that will help them move into the digital and streaming space because that's where people go now. And even though you think it's diminishing, it still has sort of this outsized influence where it's sort of, you know, everybody's reporting on each other. So you and I can say something on streaming on our digital shows, on a podcast or on the radio, and no one will pick it up. But the moment I, you know, I go on to CNN and I talk to Aaron Burnett and I say, Aaron, let me give you some evidence, whatever. Everybody writes about it. True. Right? When hardly that, not that table. many people are watching it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and even if you if you look at Morning Good Joe, point. which mm -hmm. I watch Morning Joe, right? I, I love I love watching um, Joe Scarborough, but if you actually look at how many people watch it, it's not that many people. But they have an outsized influence because, in some ways, all the right people in Washington are watching it. Um, you know, it can it can sell books and all of those things. Um, but it's, it, when you it, just around the country. Not that many people are watching. And then if you turn it on the morning shows on the networks, it's like, do you know you're watching entertainment? There's not what, and, what's the there there. There's none really. And and also when you talk about the narrow casting and people want confirmation bias, there was such an outrage to the New York Times on the left by people. And it was the treatment of Biden for some that were thought they were driving him out of the race and saying good stories about Donald Trump. So I've never now, seen it. Even now their criticism of Stephanie Rules. Uh, interview with Kamala Harris, it, had, it has people wondering, like, is the New York Times, all of that, and what you're saying, is mm -hmm. the New York Times gunning for a Donald Trump presidency because they want to sell more newspapers? Yep. That's, I, very, that's, that's, a, that's a legitimate question. I'll tell you, years ago, before a candidate like the Democratic nominee had not done a lot of interviews, even Democrats would say, you should go do them. Now, Democrats call my show and we talk about it. You should do them, but in places that are reaching us, forget corporate media. You don't have, like, if you want to do an NBC or CBS interview, sure, I get that. But go on, like Vice President Harris went on the a sports radio show. Do that. Go on the podcast. Come on my show. I'd love that. Or and Pod Saves show. America. Go on your show. <laughs> go to places where we no longer trying to convince people, not in the last 40 days of the election. In any event, it's getting your side out. Go to them. 
You don't need to go on CNN and talk to Jake Tapper. You don't need to go on Rachel. But I think that makes sense, actually, because you're going to the right place. You're going to feed the people like they go on Fox News for who? No one watching Fox is going to vote for her. Accidentally, maybe someone's like, maybe I will. But in a close election, people are like, F corporate media. I've never heard this. I'm just sharing you what I hear from listeners and online, but especially from listeners. There's a hostility to corporate media that was never there before. It's there now. It's never there before. Uh, not in the last, last year and a half. It's been so strong. And you think you, you correct me if I'm wrong. You think that CNN hastened that? You think that they, I think CNN, and New York they, Times. Uh, and I think the sense that we came out of this shackle of this mindset that we have to protect the media. It's the First Amendment. They're on our side. They expose fraud. They're the great disinfectant, the sunlight. That's still true. But all of a sudden, people started realizing there was so many things that were problematic about the media. We, I, others started encouraging them, call them out the same way they do on the right. You play the refs. We just want the content to be fair. And then it, now it's taken off where I, I we're explain. alive and well on our side like that. I, yes. Yes. I mean, but we have to fight. I mean, unlike you're on, you're on serious. You have a platform. Yeah. I'm independent. So it's right. like rev share and, um, and, um, sponsors and advertising for me. Right. And writing mm -hmm. books. Right. So, I mean, that's all well and good. I can handle all of that, but I can tell you what really hasten the demise of that and why people think that they, they, they think it's, it's very easy. You don't know, Dean. Disconnecting it's cable. What is yeah. it? It is. Well, that look, people are, you don't have to, I don't have a cord. I haven't had a cord. I didn't have a cord when I worked at CNN. Wow. I, no, I didn't. I started, well, not the, the, I I say, the last few years when once AT&T bought CNN and we got direct stream streaming television, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And I could get every single channel without having a cord. I got rid of my cord. And so I have streaming on direct and I've had it since AT&T owned um, CNN. The reason that this is happening is because of false equivalency. So in some ways, you have to attribute it to Donald Trump. You have to attribute it to MAGA. You have to attribute it to people not uh, being uh, learned or educated about the media. We should teach media literacy and just for the people who are narrow casting. So but I blame a lot of it on corporate media because they or they this is what they think. OK, I'm just talking in general. Sure. A lot of Trump people, conservatives or whatever it may be, watch TV and they need to sell ads to those people and they want those people to tune in. And so then you have a false equivalency where you can place Joe Biden, who is dealing with something that I think all of us will deal with if we are lucky. And that mm -hmm. is if we are lucky enough to get to a place where we can't remember like a word or a phrase, which happens to me. Then that means what? We're doing what the natural progression and process is for life. We're aging. Right. Right. Um, with someone who is has 34 criminal counts, who's found liable of sexual assault, uh, assaulting a woman, who um, had to pay out millions for a fake university, who is co-opting his um, supporters into giving him money to pay for his legal bills, and on and, and on and on and on and on and on. Those two things are not equal. And to and the viewer is very smart. The viewers are very smart, and they realize those two, those two things are aren't equal. And they go, "Well, why on earth are you sitting there pretending that someone, a, a MAGA supporter who doesn't who believes that the the 2020 election was fraudulent and stolen, why are you putting them on with someone who is operating in truth and and fact and integrity? Those two things are not equal. And if you call out." the MAGA person and say, look, you're lying or you're out of your mind or you're crazy or this is bullshit, then you may lose your job, right? If you are a journalist or, and if you, if you tell, if you don't tell that person that the people at home are like, what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I find that the fringes, the loudest voices are the extremes. So the people who are going to complain and say, I can't believe that CNN or MSNBC or whatever aren't putting on, you know, conservatives and uh, Donald Trump supporters. And then the, the advertisers and, and the bosses get scared, like, we got to put these people on. Right. And the same thing on And Fox doesn't care. Do you see how many liberals do you see on Fox? They have one, don't they? Have okay. two? I just, so I think know. I think that's that is what's happening. That's what I, that's actually I, you know, in my view that 
one of the greatest sins of corporate media was normalizing Donald Trump collectively That's what after I'm saying. January 6th. That's like what the I'm man, saying. every article, if you wrote an article about bin Laden, you would never leave 9-11 out. If you write an article or talk about Donald Trump, how can you leave the January 6th terrorist attack out when the guy reminds us that he's going to pardon the terrorists who attacked and beat up police officers? The guy attempted a coup. Call me naive, but I thought on January 7th, the day after, I'm like, he's going to be arrested soon. He's going to be in jail soon. That's the end of this guy. And instead, he's making more money. He's, he's the nominee. And little by little, I watched corporate media normalize this guy. It was normalized. Was a, right. That, and to me, and I think DOJ played a role. If they'd indicted Donald Trump swiftly for something, really quickly, it could have changed things. Yeah. But you wait two and a half years. Well, how serious is what he's done? Because they're afraid. Of, well, they don't want to seem like they're partisan, right? I don't, it seemed like right, and that's the whole thing. That's the whole problem. This sort of sort of fake equivalency, even I think within the uh, false equivalency, even in in the Justice Department. Um, but think about this, and I don't want to call any names because people say, "Oh my God, he compared him to this bad person." Think about all of the dictators and bad people in history who have caused all kinds of atrocities. Imagine if the media would have put them on the same level as someone who is at least trying to work within the system and democracy and whatever, I mean, no matter how flawed they are. Imagine if you put those two, those two things, right? When we I have agree. atrocities throughout history. Uh, and if you want to go back, just go back and think about it. Just say, I wonder if when this was happening in history, if the media was saying, well, this person, and it maybe at some point it did. And there, but there is no lesson that people right. are learning from that. Well, the dictator probably controlled the media at the very time when they were in control, right? That's yeah. the difference. Like now, I'm chatting with our friend Don Lemon. Don, I, I don't want to. I want to talk about your book. We only have a few minutes left. I don't want to do a disservice. I found it very compelling. I once was lost in my search for God in America, and and the reason I find it compelling is that. And you don't talk about your relationship with God too much, but I know it's important to you, and it's very important to me. I pray every day. Like I mean, people don't get that. Like, and I'm and I'm the same like you. Don't make your religion our law. That's out. Like you talk about that. Like that is, I will defend your right to practice your faith until you want to make that faith belief into the law. Then I'm going to fight you. I don't care what your religious ba background is. That's not for this country. So, you know, you talked about in your book, your search for God in America begins with a search for God within ourselves. And I found that very interesting. Like, and there might be people out there, a lot of atheists. I mean, I have a lot of progressives who don't, how do you, why, what would you say to them about searching for God? If they go, I don't believe there's a God. I definitely I would say it. I would say that that is your right to believe and, and right. good on you if you don't believe in God. But that doesn't mean that you should, if you don't believe in God, just because you don't believe in God does not make you a bad person. Just because right. you don't believe in God doesn't mean that you don't have morals or standards, right? Uh, and just, and it, just because you don't believe in, in God uh, or you're an atheist, it doesn't mean that you don't you don't abide by the golden rule, which is do unto others. And that is enough for me. But what's also enough is that the whole reason that we're here as a country is what well, one of the reasons is because we wanted religious freedom. That's why we're not part of England anymore. We didn't want a mon monarchy, right? We didn't want a dictator or a leader or a monarchy. and we and we wanted to be able we wanted the freedom to be able to to um serve or uh, practice whatever religious faith, serve whatever God we wanted to, and practice whatever religious faith that we wanted to, or not to. Mm -hmm. Everyone, A lot of people forget the or not to. You don't have to. And so in this book, I, and I, I write, you may be, you may not be a believer, and you should pick this up because maybe it'll help you become a believer, or maybe it'll help you understand those who are a believer. And I believe people who are non-believers will get more out of this book than people who are. And people who are questioning their faith will get more out of uh, people who are uh, already uh, religious, religious, right? Um, so it's, a, and by the way, the book is not just about religion. It's it's actually about what's happening right now in mm -hmm. politics, in the zeitgeist. When, uh, when the publishers read this book, they said, well, they were going to release it in November. And then I sent them the manuscript and they started reading it. And they're like, wow, uh, this needs to come out before the election because people need to read it. Because I talk about everything from a woman's right to mm -hmm. racism, uh, to homophobia, to um, uh, um, 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 uh, gun rights, all kinds of things that I talk about. Just, you know, the hypocrisy and all of it covering Sandy Hook and Uvalde. And you realize, like, you know, we have kids are dying. Like, why are you guys sitting on your hands? So it's it's about everything uh, that's going on right now, and, and mostly the hypocrisy um, uh, from the religious right, the religious right nationalists, evangelicals who try to marginalize people, and who are not only just um, blurring the line between uh, religion and politics, right, theocracy, but they're trying to erase it. 
And they're pushing us toward a theocracy that's pushing us away from God and away from democracy. And I mean, do you see a connection with MAGA as a way, almost like a religious cult? Absolutely. It's a cult. Yeah. They make every excuse for him. If you talk about, you know, uh, someone who has morals and values and someone who is godlike, I don't know a, a person, you know, a, a political figure who is the antithesis of that. And that is Donald Trump. Every single thing um, they make excuses for. Okay, all right. So he's a he's a philanderer, or he's you know he covets his neighbor's wife. It's all right. Okay, he's a liar. Okay, he's a cheat. Okay, and, and all of these things, but it's okay. And they make excuses for it. Where others they will judge. The rules for Vice President Kamala Harris are different from him. According to them, she slept her way to the top. But him being a man whore doesn't matter to them, right? And so it, the, the, make it make sense for me because it doesn't. All that is showing is, number one, you want to interpret religious scripture in the way that you want to. You want to place your religious beliefs and your prejudices onto other people. If you don't want an abortion in our country, it should be don't have one. But you cannot decide for other women what is right for their reproductive rights. Men who are deciding these laws in many ways, there is not one law that tells them what they can and cannot do with their bodies. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to tell women what they can and cannot do with their bodies. And so it's hypocrisy and control and it's racism as well and bigotry. And it is misogyny. Those same scriptures that they use to enslave people, that they use to subjugate women, they're now using in this particular time in our politics to do very similar things. They demonize immigrants. And I'm like, have you read Matthew where it says you were a stranger and I welcomed you in, you were hungry and I gave you food. And you know, like what, it doesn't matter. The, 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 they demonize helping the poor. They demonize, right? Like having some, having empathy. When did that all become bad? I don't understand it. It's not, it's not at all. Well, Don, again, the new book is I Once Was Lost, is My Search for God in America. It's a very compelling book, and, you, and it is about today's politics. And there's the book, a good picture of you, Don. It was nice catching up with you, my friend. I hope you'll come back on in the near future. I'd love to have you on, you know, whatever you have time. You're, any project you have promoting, you're always welcome. Dan, always Dan always same open. for you. Continued success. And hello to all of your Sirius XM listeners and viewers and YouTube and whatever it is that you do. You're a great guy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, my friend. You, you were little Lord Fauntleroy. What did your name mean? No, little servant of God. <laughs> Obidallah, Obidallah, Allah. I am working for God. I, I talk to God every day. We have a good relationship. God's uh, very, God says you're a good guy too, just so you know. All right. Take yeah. care, my friend. Bye-bye. Yeah.